Hi guys, happy Friday and welcome to another live with me, Claris. Um, I'm just going to make sure everyone is able to view um, before we begin. Are you able to see my table properly? Let me know if you cannot. I think you can. It's just so bright in my room over here that my screen is looking dark, but I just want to make sure before I begin and start rattling. Uh, let me know in the comments. And if I don't hear from you, I'm just going to assume that everything is good and we will start shortly. So um, just want to recap a little bit about what we've been doing while I'm just wiping down my palette, getting ready for our session. Um, it's Valentine's Day soon. And so we are on this whole tip of painting for postcards. I know, just call me the postcard lady. I've already set this in my reel. But we've been doing, um, so I've decided to do little reels for people who aren't patient enough to watch my 20 plus minute videos. Um, and then we've got these little Stratmore paper postcard um, paintings. I've got three done so far, not necessarily for Valentine's Day. You can also make them for birthdays and stuff like that. So these are coming up. I think I posted, no, I know I posted this one already. And then on YouTube, we've got this gorgeous ruby diamond that's up. And I've decided we're going to be using metallics for all of this because Valentine's Day, I think, is like the perfect excuse to use metallics. You all know I love my shiny stuff. Um, I'm just trying to find where is, where are my metallics? Oops. I got a nice little tin can from KMS. So I don't know. I'm thinking maybe since I cannot find my bronze and champagne, I might use these guys for today. We will see. But um, yeah, today we're going to go loose. We're going to go fun and something definitely mixed with metallics in our florals. So we're going to go that way. Um, but feel free to check these out if you guys want more inspo for painting and just want to challenge yourself. Okay, so let's begin. Aloha, lady. L-B-H-S-E centric art. Nice to have you here. Okay, so let me walk over what I have real quick. And then you guys can either follow along or just watch the replay after and you can just paint at your leisure because this will be posted on my um, on my YouTube. So you can just avail of that. OK, so I'm going to be using my for paper. I'm using my Stonehenge Legion uh, hot, press. Yeah, hot press. Then for brushes i have all these brushes handy i might not end up using all of them but i know my staples that i use always are the princeton number no. six neptune round and then the princeton four in velvet touch i really like brushes like the oval brush and stuff because it really gives loose organic shapes to our loose florals the Princeton Zero Heritage is a fast favorite for tiny little details, especially for the center of the flowers. And yeah, this is another four because I'm obsessed with the number four velvet. Hi, Jen B. Good morning. And then we've got the Princeton number eight. Um, again, just in case I need it. Um, okay, so let's begin. For colors, I've got the Dalaroni watercolors. Uh, I've Aquafine watercolors. I have selected, um, and again, I've not really tested them out, but I have selected the permanent rose, which is like a nice, beautiful pink. Alizarin crimson, which is also pretty. Uh, I've also got the vermilion hue. Vermilion hue is like such a pretty color. I can't even stress this. Uh, and I think it'll go really well with the alizarin. Like, I like uh, teaming them together. They have such startling effects. The Indian Yellow Hue, which is also, like, a cute little color. For our muted tones, we've got Naples Yellow. And then, finally, for greens, 
I've got olive green, I've got hooker's green, but I like to mix the hooker's green with a little bit of sepia because our florals are bright, so it's nice to have green that's a little muted and not in your face bright, then everything isn't jumping in your face. Okay, um, hi there, those metallic watercolors, how do they compare to run-of-the-mill types as they're quite pricey, but I see a lot of YouTubers using them. Morning, Marcia. Tammy, so um, I have... Uh, in terms of run-of-the-mill, I'm not sure if you would consider Paul Rubens run-of-the-mill, but I do have Paul Rubens, and I think I have Etcher as well. And I have to say, these are way more potent. So if you're okay with just having a little bit of shimmer and you're not looking for super dark or bright, um, then run-of-the-mill works great. But as you can see over here, these almost transition on paper like it is gold leafing. And I love how it transitions with regular watercolor and blends in as well. So I love how in your face the effect is. So that's just me though. And mind you, also keep in mind that all these pretty colors don't transition quite the same way. Like this one right here, and I think this one is called Squid. Um, it's a little bit different because it's got bigger chunks of uh, glitter in it as opposed to I guess fine paste. I don't know if that makes any sense, but yeah. So if you guys are wondering about how certain colors look and you're thinking of purchasing, just let me know if I have them. I'm happy to sort of do a swatch and send you a picture via DMs or email or whatever, and then you can decide for yourself. Okay. All right, guys, let us begin. Uh, give me one second to sure everything is good and then we're going to begin okay so i'm going to start off with using yeah i'll start off with using my oval brush because i like that and we're going to do we're going to i'm going to pick one flower and then one little filler floral or something to kind of complement it and we're going to repeat that just so that it's easy for you all to kind of tag along and then it's a repetition thing and then you learn more along with it so, like I mentioned, I really love the whole transition of Vermilion and Alizarin, but we're going to start off with using my Naples Yellow, actually. And I'm going to have the flowers be a little more muted with a nice bright center, so maybe using the Vermilion for the center. I'm not sure if I'll use the Rose Red. So I'm getting a nice about 30% mixture of color on here. I like to double dip or use double brushes rather, not double dip. We're not about double dipping here in this household. Just kidding. Okay, so I'll use the number six and get some uh, of the vermilion. And I'm just keeping this handy because the thing about watercolor is you need to make sure if you're looking for those nice, beautiful gradients, you need to make sure you're dropping color in at just the right time before it dries up. So paper is important, the kind of paper you're using, the kind of color also is important, but I think mostly paper, because to get those nice, beautiful transitions needs to remain damp longer. And that's where the beauty of 100% cotton paper comes shines through. Okay, so we're gonna do like simple, I'll make this very basic, simple florals. So I'm using my oval brush, like I mentioned. I just wanna make sure you can see, yep, there we go. And you know what, I'm going to zoom in. There we go, okay. Um, I'll, we'll, we'll, do, we'll do a flower right about here. So I don't like to really start in the center. So here we go. Using the side of my brush, I'm just pressing down multiple times to create a nice organic shape for my first petal. And then we're kind of going to go around and do the same thing all around. So feel free to have four pet. No, let's do five petals. And your transition as you're going around doesn't need to be perfection. Like we're not looking for the perfect um, circle in the center where we're leaving white space or we're not looking for the exact same ratios in our petals. So just go with the flow allow the brush strokes to kind of speak for themselves 
we're pushing all the color down to the center of our petal. And notice I've got a little bit of white space in between. Those are key. I'm going to get some vermilion, which I already have on here. And we're going to drop this in right in the center and watch it bloom. The reason it's blooming, again, because we've got a damp area. So we're getting a nice little pretty design, like a bloom happening in watercolor. And this is where I say go with the flow because... In watercolor, you can't really control where things are going. You can to a certain extent, but not really when, um, yeah, you just can't because it all depends on how the water is positioned and where it's directed, how your paper is, um, what angle your paper is in, all these different things. So you can see my bloom sort of ends here, but I've got this beautiful sort of natural light I don't know, swirly stuff happening over here, but that's because I've got water almost at a pooling level happening over there. So I'm just going to keep on dabbing more color in the center. And the more layers you add, the darker it gets. So I'm only adding it to the center. So my center is going to be nice and pretty and dark. Well, and it's going to give me this nice little transition from dark to sort of light over there. Now, if you want to drop some of this color at the edges of your flowers, just to kind of have a hint of that, you can. What I am going to do is get a little bit of the alizarin, which is that nice pinky hue. And I'm going to drop some of this to my edges because, and you'll see this in a bit, I want three colors happening in my florals. But I'm also going to be using some of this color in some of the filler florals that we're going to be painting. So I'm just dropping little hints of this. And don't worry guys, if you've got questions, just add it to the comments and I'm going to address it as soon as I take a quick break because most of the time I need to catch the flower before it dries to finish the transition and then yeah, so something simple like this is good enough. We're just practicing or we're just trying to get really into the whole loose um, loose petals, loose strokes, that sort of thing. And also analyzing how the color mixes and when to catch, um, when to sort of drop the color in because that's also a key factor. All right, so... I'm going to let this dry for a bit. Most of it is dried up. Let's progress and do another flower. We'll do at least like three, at least three. So here we go, getting some of my Naples. We're going to do another one around here. Let's do one slightly kind of elevated on the up. And I'm using the side of my brush, like not the flat area, but the side of my brush, just so I can control how big my strokes are and I'm really trying hard to leave a little bit of space in between my petals and sometimes most people have realized even though it seems simple to me in my head a lot of people struggle with this and so I've got a solution if you are someone who struggles with leaving that round white space in the center and I'm going to show that to you in the next flower so I've done my five petals. We're going in with our vermilion. Like I said, we're going to repeat this just so you guys are able to follow along and get used to this and just have fun with it. So you can notice it's doing the same thing that it did for my first flower. Obviously, it's not exactly the same because the way the water is on the paper is different. The amount of water I had on my brush was also different, but essentially we're getting sort of the same look. And this is why I also say in watercolor, you can, you can sort of mimic someone or even yourself, but you will never get the exact same results because so much is dependent on the supplies you use, the strokes you use, the amount of water you use, um, the timing of when you go in and, and place your color and all these different things. Okay, so now we're going in with the alizarin. 
and getting a little bit of that, mixing it onto the side, and I'm dropping some of that. See, it doesn't have a lot of water, so this kind of just sits at the edge a little bit. But the more I poke it and the more I kind of extend it, it's giving me a little bit of a bloom. So I'm just going to help it along. And you absolutely can help it along. So for instance, if you wanted to sort of have more of a linear effect happening from the center, you can just sort of, whoops, that went a bit too out. This is where paper towel comes in handy. But we can use green to sort of cover that up, not a big deal. You can extend it from in out or from out in. Because you'll get different results depending on how you're laying down your strokes. So try both, see what it's like, because I say experience is really the best teacher. Watching is one thing, but when you're actually doing it for yourself, it's an entirely different learning game and ball game and painting game. So just dropping some of this in. If I start from the center and pull it outward, it kind of blooms where I end. If I start from out and take it into the center, it stops there. So that's the difference there. You can even take your paper up and kind of help the color move down. Again, it's entirely up to you, your preference, your creative judgment and preferences, really. Okay, that's it. I'm not doing any more. Uh, my center is dried up, so I'm not... I can't really add any more of that. We're going to repeat the same thing. And this time I'm going to show you how to have a little bit more control over getting your round area, your, your white area in the center. So you've probably seen me do this if you've been following me for a while. But, uh, and if you're not following me and you're on here, please follow me because if you enjoy painting like this or florals in general, I post stuff like this all the time and I already have hundreds on here so feel free to check that out too. So using my oval brush I am going to create one, two, three, four, five dots in a circle. Simple enough. I'm dipping the tip of my brush in water and I'm extending outward. and creating one, two, three, four, five petals. Simple enough, right? And now I have my center and we're good. So taking the orange, the vermilion, and dropping that in, and I'm getting that beautiful bloom. Like this is the effect you guys can use for painting uh, cherry blossoms and I have a cherry blossom video on here as well, so you can check that out. But look how the transition is so pretty. Like cherry blossoms are what, like a light pink or a white. And they've got like this beautiful light pink center or dark pink, depending on the color of the blossom. This is where you can get that effect. It's simple. It's easy. Um, you can do a whole bunch. Yeah, and just go to town with that. So I'm just dropping in more color because like I mentioned before, the more you drop in, the darker it becomes, and the more it kind of seeps into your flower. So now we're taking our third color, and I'm dropping that in here before it sort of dries up. Now most of, um, I can tell, and this comes with practice again, I can tell if the color is going to blend in or not based on how damp my sheet looks. So that's why I'm sort of dropping some color and then pulling it downward into my center, just so it's getting a little bit of guidance and push. Otherwise, it's just going to sit on the top. And this is where the more you do, the more you will sort of understand these little telltale signs happening within your work. I don't mind adding, pushing more of it into the center and having a blend of alizarin and vermilion. I think it's also a pretty combination, so that's why I'm kind of pulling it in. 
Okay, simple enough. We're not going to do any more. We're now going to progress into doing more of a... Actually, let's do let's do two really quick ones. What time is it? 9.22. Yeah. Let's do two really, really quick ones, but like smaller and not as bright and potent. And now I can zoom by this because, um, because you guys have seen me do three already. So here we go. Loose, fun, quick, easy. We're not sitting there honing in. The easy part is that, that we're not sitting in there sitting on here honing in on precise proportions or anything like that that's the easy part in case y'all are thinking okay it looks easy but it's not i get that all the time imagine if you had to get the technique and the flow and you had to get your proportions right that would be really tough so just giving you some perspective There we go. So leaving that as is, dropping in some of our pink, because I had less water on my brush for this, so that's why it's not as blooming for the pink areas at the top. And also because I spent most of my time doing the center. So timing, timing is everything especially to get your little blooms. So, so this area is completely dried up. Okay. Got four. Let's do one more. Oh my gosh, I did say I was going to do some metallics. Okay, you know what? We'll do metallics for the leaves. I completely forgot about metallics. LBHSE centric art. I, I read your comment and I remembered the metallics. I'm really challenging myself. I did get some metallics. It's a lot easier than I thought. Yeah, it is. It's literally just like regular watercolor. So hi, Supriya. Thank you. Hi, Dorothy from Wyoming. Okay, one more and then we can progress to other elements. So if you're just joining in and um, unsure about the direction don't worry this is going the replay will be available for you to watch um, later on my channel so just just hop back on once this is done and you can start from the beginning so my fifth one two three four five yeah dropping that in here into the center and it's just this is the part of watercolor that I find super therapeutic and so calming and fun it's the part where you drop the color in and it blooms gorgeous not just to look at like cat videos but also to experience as you the art artist doing it yourself dropping in my pink at the top like we have for the last few flowers I'm going to do a little bit more of the vermilion just to get more of a bleed and a blend perfect that's it Okay, so we've got these happening. We can now move on to doing some of our leaves. Uh, for the leaves, I did mention... Wash up some of this vermilion. I did mention we're going to use olive green or hooker's green mixed in with some of the sepia. So let's do... Let's start off with the... I think we'll just use the one green. Yeah. So hooker's green mixed in with some sepia. I know my palette is not clean, but I don't like this is a lot of color right there, guys. I don't want to just dump it out, especially because I paint so much. 
Okay, so I get a color like this, which is like a dark wooded sort of green. And we're going to do, we're, we're going to try and give movement to our painting. So give your, give your leaves, like have them in direction. So this way you're able to have some flow and movement in your, in your painting. Uh, I'm also going to leave a little bit of space to do our little fillers. And I think we'll, we'll do more of a, um, let's see, like a, um, like a fruit or a berry. So let's go with that. So we'll start off with doing, I like the idea of extending a nice little stem over here and then just doing regular, simple leaves. So using the tip of my brush, pressing down, trailing towards where my stem is. You can perfect the shape of your leaf or you can choose to leave it as is. I'll just leave that up to you. Then I'm doing one kind of flopping this way and then pulling down to where my stem is. Simple, easy peasy. Let me get my metallics. I just had it here and okay. I'm gonna get this little this little guy here for my metallics. Just so you can see how this looks when you drop it in. I'm gonna get some off the bronze. Let's get bronze. You could even choose to do the metallics in your in your veins for the leaf. I'm going to drop that in here. This is the same concept with the flowers. Remember how we drop the color in the center? Same concept here. All I'm doing is adding a dash of metallics within my leaf. And again, you can choose to tilt your paper. Let me just get my brushes. You can tilt your paper and this way the color can naturally sort of blend into Yes, I can pull my sheet down lower. I just wanted you guys to see more of this at the bottom here. Can you see this now? Yeah. So again, you can continue adding like drops of color or metallics within this if you want more of a startling effect or you can leave it as is. What I would also do at this point you have your green leaves, but it would be nice to have almost like little tinier leaves coming out from here and painting them with your number four and doing tinier leaves. It complements the color and it complements the, the actual composition so well because you've got large leaves and then you've got small leaves. So that can be another element that you add within your within your composition. Just throwing out ideas there on how you can make this all work. Okay, so for instance, say if we just did the small leaves over here. Some just kind of tilting downward. And this uh, bronze, also one of my favorites, is such, it drops just like the champagne. The champagne is my number one favorite by KMS, and then the bronze would be the next, just because I like my warm tones. The silver is also great, but again, like I said, I like my warm tones way better. I'm a sunny girl, if that makes any sense. Okay, so same concept. We're going to repeat this all around, okay? Almost kind of looks like a wedding card at this point. So let's do another leaf protruding from here or another stem protruding from here. And then this time, instead of starting from out going in, I'm starting from my stem, pressing down and trailing out. So you can paint leaves these two different ways. Either you start from out in or in out. That's what I mean by in out, out in. You can even have some kind of just extending out this way 
It doesn't have to have a structured look. Again, this is the this is the beauty of loose watercolor. It does not have to have a structured look. We're kind of unlearning everything we've learned in elementary school or art. Well, not really art school, but elementary school more like it, I would say. Paint between, paint in between the lines and make sure you don't bleed out. We're looking for bleed air, so it's a little bit of unlearning. So dropping the metallic in, that's what I'm doing here. Same thing that I did down here. Really depends on how much you want and how you want it to transition within your leaf. You can also wait for it to dry and then go in and do just the veins. So like this area is dried up and I can just go in and add a little bit more detail to my veins. Again, a preference. Okay, I'm also going to add, uh, let's do, yeah, no, let's finish the leaves first. I don't want to get super obsessed with placement of my metallics without even placing my background leaves. So get, getting a little bit more of my green mixed. I'm going to go ahead and add, I'm going to add one leaf here. So I think it's safe to say I'm going to add all my leaves going upward. That's the direction I am giving my, my painting. Beautiful little rivers of color. And then if you want like more of a feathering look for your third leaf or the leaf that's like closest to the outer bits, you're just adding more water to your brush to get a very muted, soft lay of color in your strokes, okay? So you can do something like that. I'm going to add another one here, just to kind of what I like to call fluffing. And this way, it kind of, it guides your eye from the elements that jump out and then the elements that are meant to be in the back. Okay. It's coming along nicely. Let's do another one here. This part, doing the stem, I'm just using the tip of my brush. It takes a little bit of effort if you're new in terms of um, brush control. So I would just suggest taking a sheet of paper and just trying to loosely graze the sheet and have your thin stem bits. In between, let's do one here as well. Perfect. So I'm not going to do any more leaves. Actually, wait, hold on. I lied a little bit. Just want to do one here. Okay, now we're going in with our metallics and dropping some of that in. So I know I did this one first, so I'm just going to drop some lines or some stem strokes in here. Drop some in here as well.
So I'm giving you guys the best of both worlds. In my reels on Instagram, TikTok, those videos are showing you how to drop this in as a background. Um, An upcoming postcard idea that I'm going to be posting is going to have this in the flower. And then in our live here together, we're doing it for the leaves. So you can see or get ideas on how to use your watercolor metallics and give your, give your paintings or your cards or your DIY arts, uh, artwork extra pizzazz. Maybe you're doing your own wedding invitations. Which is also a great idea to sort of incorporate. I'm just going to spread this out a bit and then we are good. Okay, perfect. Now let's do a couple of these elements and then we're ending off with doing our um, berry elements that I had mentioned. And for that, I'm going to use more of the alizarin. Okay, let's go. Um, I'm going to do, so I've got tiny ones like this here. So let's do in between the flowers. I think that would be super pretty. This is so potent that it's almost like a gouache consistency. So when I go over my flower petals that I have laid down, it's a beautiful, beautiful coverage. I feel like I'm talking about makeup right now. It does look like a pretty highlighter, to be very honest. Okay, just going to make sure you guys can still see this. Pulling this downward. You know what, maybe I should just zoom out a bit. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, another one. So we've got one going up this way. So let's do one going up this way. Yeah, so take your time painting this. And this is what I mean when I post about, you know, just light that candle, turn on that playlist on Spotify or SoundCloud, wherever, and just go with the flow. Allow the watercolor painting and you expressing yourself to just take that time for yourself and just enjoy the moment. Be present in the moment. And a lot of this is just repetition. You're just repeating. You're repeating things over and over. It's a great way to practice. It's a great way to come to self and just relax. These are beautiful. I love the colors. They go so well together. I'm so glad you like this, Marcia. How many of you guys are actually painting with me right now? Or are you guys just watching? I'm just curious. I'll do one over here. So we incorporated some incorporated some over here in these leaves so we need to do a little bit of that before we can move on so let's do i'll do some over on this end here like 
specific placement of these things is important so you can, you know, so your eye is guided. But again, you're, we're baby steps. If you're brand new to watercolor, just focus on getting the techniques and getting comfortable with the medium first. And then you can progress onto the other things like composition and whatnot, which I also talk a lot about in my videos. Yeah, okay, so this is good enough. Let's move on to doing the um, the little berries that I mentioned, and then we are done. Okay, so berries. Let's go alizarin. I actually really like how this looks, so we could actually just stop over here, but I just want to do that nice pop of alizarin so it picks up on our pink on the flowers. I think that's going to be super, super pretty. So here we go. Mixing some of my alizarin on here, and I'm going to use my number four. By the way, Princeton brushes, awesome if you're new to watercolor and you are looking for inexpensive but quality brushes these are great um and i'm not just saying that because i'm an ambassador for them just fyi they truly are um just making sure you guys can see better okay so let's place some over here mm, no let's place more at the bottom and then progress upward and see if we need any more so i'll start some over here and all I'm doing is kind of like an almond shape or almost like a leaf shape um, painting. And let's do about three. Like a bud. Okay, we're almost sort of painting buds and pushing all the color down to the center or to the bottom of it. Now I'm taking water on my brush and I'm just going to do another shape and this one's going to lightly touch the third or the second bud and now what you could do a suggestion is you can take some of your um vermilion and drop that in maybe at the bottom or at the top of these little buds and now you're getting you're getting like a cohesive look because now all the colors are tying in beautifully I'm going to use this just for vermilion and let's use the second, I had another, yeah, let's use my second number four for my alizarin. I'm going to drop more of my alizarin in here too, just so it can get a nice dark, dark look. Now, what I'm doing here is the same thing I did for my flowers for the center. I'm just dabbing that color in there so that it just spreads all around in that area that I've added water to. And now I'm going to take the zero. So I'm using my four brushes here now. Getting some of the green that we have mixed. And I'm going to extend and create stems to join our beautiful buds that's all there is to it we're gonna let this dry and we'll give it a little fuzz at the at the tips using our sepia so yeah that's the whole idea so getting more let's place a couple more of these buds around so it ties in nicely let's do some i'm gonna do some over here i'm gonna add this here And then taking the vermilion, I'm going to drop that in. I tried to drop it in and then it kind of extended, so that's why I'm faffing around with the shape of it. Just drop more of that in there. Perfect. Um, let's do some at the top. One, two, three. Zigzag. We're going in a zigzag manner.
do a tiny one there. Okay, vermilion, dropping that in. You don't even, you could like eliminate the vermilion part if it's not, it's not um, speaking to you. And then our green. And notice how because I am extending this right now while it is damp, I'm getting beautiful rivers of like that pink going in mixed with the green and it looks absolutely stunning. I'm just going to add an extension and just do what looks to be like tinier leaves. Again, you're creating visual interest tying things in together by getting great contrast with big elements, smaller elements, soft elements, dark elements. All of these things really, really help with your, with your composition. So I really like how this looks. You guys got the idea. I'm not going to add any more to it now, but I will add, I might add some later, but like I mentioned, we're going in to add a little bit of the fuzzy edges to our berries. So this one's semi-dried up. You can see a little bit of a bleed happening. So I'm just doing a couple of little lines at the tip. If you don't want it to bleed into the pink because you're like, it's just not a preference for you, you can wait for it to dry fully and then go ahead and do this bit. I don't mind a little bit of bleed. It gives that nice, pretty loose effect. So I'm just adding that in now. This bit or this part also takes a little bit of brush control because you're controlling the brush to get nice thin lines for your beer, for your, yeah, you know what I mean. Same thing here. So there's a lot of bleed happening here, which is not a bad idea, or it's not the end of the world, but if you want to control that, you can just take your paper towel and you lightly, I got a little bit of marks over there, so lightly dab and it kind of just absorbs the color without interfering too much suggestion, okay? How about a tiny bit of bling? Oh, thank you, Dorothy. Um, bling? We've got bling in here, girlfriend. What do you mean by bling? Like, we've got metallics in here. Is that what you mean? Can you guys see the metallics, by the way? That leads me to ask that question. Um, and while time, Tammy is going to answer that, I'm just going to also suggest adding some of this dark to your flower centers as well, because it'll make it pop. So again, you have the option of going dots all around or little lines. Uh, I think I will do little lines. And again, brush control using the tip of your brush. And let the grazing. And going all around. Leaving white space in between and not obsessing over the fact that, you know, all these little lines don't uh, line up properly or they're not the same height. We are getting over that. That is what loose watercolor is all about. You can't be obsessing over things that are out of your control. This is also why it is very therapeutic a medium because it makes you sort of look at life in a manner where, more realistic manner, so you can be a little more happier knowing that there are things you can control and then there are things you can't and you need to let stuff go sometimes. Okay, therapy session is done. Let's continue doing our little centers. And then if you all have any questions, please put them in the comments right now and I am happy to answer that for you. 
but let me know if you're going to paint this if you've just been watching me along all this time um, like I mentioned the video will be available for you to <clears throat> view once I am done fully that is and uh, like if you're not following me on Instagram and stuff guys I would love to see your work and if you post it on there so just tag me and if you're not following me or subscribed on here but you love watercolor art I suggest that you hit that like button and subscribe because I've got tons of videos on here and I'm going to be doing a lot more over the year so just join me join me for painting relaxing all that good stuff oh and anyone looking for the um, supplies I'm using they're listed below so just find the links there and you can either get them off Amazon via the links or you can go to your local art store and get them there okay so this is all I'm going to do I'm going to leave the rest but like pop right just like a pop it makes your centers pop we're leaving things loose the white space really helps all that good stuff okay and that is it guys uh let's see how about a tiny bit of bling looks lovely okay Tammy didn't say anything so I'm assuming Tammy just couldn't see the the bling on here because I know the lighting is not the best but here we go you can see it right anyways guys thank you so much for joining me I'm seeing that no one has any questions but you know you're watching this later and you've got questions just put them in the comments below and I will definitely get to you so thanks guys for watching and uh yeah don't forget to hit the like button we'll chat soon okay see you guys next month for another live painting with me Bye, guys.